judgment in the appeal, Cox and the Minister of Justice. Lord Reid will explain the decision of the court. In some circumstances, the law imposes a liability on one person for a wrongful act committed by another. This is known as vicarious liability. The commonest example applies to employers and employees. An employer is liable for wrongful acts committed by its employees in the course of their employment. But the principle has also been applied in some other situations. For example, so as to impose liability on religious orders for the abuse of children committed by members of the order while acting as priests or teachers. This appeal raises a question, what sort of relationship, other than one of employment, has to exist between the wrongdoer and the defendant before vicarious liability can be imposed? The appellant, Mrs. Cox, was working as the catering manager of Swansea Prison when a prisoner working in the kitchen accidentally dropped a bag of rice on top of her, causing her injury. She brought proceedings against the Ministry of Justice on the basis that the prison service, which is part of the ministry, was vicariously liable for the prisoner's negligence. The prisoner was not, of course, an employee of the prison service, but he was required to work in the prison. He was selected for work in the prison kitchen. He worked there under the direction of prison staff, and his work in the kitchen formed part of the operation of the prison. He was helping to provide meals for his fellow prisoners. Mrs. Cox lost before the judge in the county court on the basis that the relationship between the prisoner and the prison service was not sufficiently similar to one of employment for vicarious liability to be imposed. That decision was overturned by the Court of Appeal, which found in favor of Mrs. Cox. The ministry now appeals to the Supreme Court. The court unanimously dismisses the appeal. The court holds that a relationship other than one of employment is in principle capable of giving rise to vicarious liability, provided certain conditions are met. First, the harm must be wrongfully done by a person who carries on activities as an integral part of the business or operation carried on by the defendant and for its benefit rather than his activities being entirely attributable to the conduct of some independent business of his own or of a third party. Secondly, the risk of a wrongful act being committed must have been caused by the defendant by assigning those activities to the person in question. Applying that approach to the facts of this case, the work done by prisoners working in the prison kitchen forms an integral part of the operation of the prison. They are working for the benefit of the prison, not for the benefit of any business of their own or of anyone else. The risk that they may negligently injure someone else working in the kitchen, such as Mrs. Cox, is one created by the prison service when it assigns prisoners to work there. The ministry is therefore vicariously liable for the negligence of the prisoner. The implications of this appeal go beyond prisons. In accepting that vicarious liability can arise where there is no contract of employment, but where the wrongdoer's activities are an integral part of the defendant's business operation and for its benefit rather than his own, this approach may be relevant in the context of many modern workplaces where workers may in reality be part of the workforce of an organization without having a contract of employment with it. <laughs>